Ready yet? Get set, it's all that. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 all that sketches. I'm Carly. And I'm Miley. And we've got a passion for trash and fashion. Uh -huh. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at some of the funniest skits from the hit Nickelodeon sketch comedy. Whether it's their hilarious parodies, or routines that are just too random not to be funny, these are the sketches that had us laughing in the 1990s and 2000s, and truly highlighted the comedic talents of some of Nick's most iconic stars. Number 10, Loud Librarian. How many pencils can she possibly sharpen? Miss Hushbaum is the noisiest librarian of all time. She screams at the top of her lungs, she blows whistles and air horns, and she'll take part in deafening, obnoxious activities. Maybe I should speak louder! Quiet! Quiet! However, you better hope she never hears you make so much as a peep, or she'll give you an earful for your loudness or chase you out of the library. This humorous hypocrite reminds us of one of the funniest aspects of most all that characters. They are the absolute worst at their given occupation, and we chuckle loudly at that incompetence. Despite how many lozenges she must have needed afterwards, this was Lori Beth Denberg's favorite sketch to perform. This is a library, not a chocatorium! Number 9, Whatever. You know those shrieking valley girls you see at school or on TV? Well, imagine if two of them got their own talk show. Welcome to Whatever with Gina and Jessica. Amanda Bynes and Christy Knowings play two such characters, Gina and Jessica, who use their airtime to talk about materialistic needs, perform makeovers and pageants, and continuously pine over Leonardo DiCaprio. I love you, Gina and Jessica. Oh, okay. I got it, I got it. They'll also occasionally have special guest appearances, including Kobe Bryant and Repairman. What ultimately sells the sketch is Amanda and Christy themselves. They bounce off each other without missing a beat, and their boundless energy is infectious. Even though they're playing two ditzy, stereotypical, and borderline insane teen girls. Oh, they're so cute and popular! Yeah, yeah. Number eight, The Adventures of Super Dude. I bet that out of the millions of pennies in this bank, none of them were as pretty or as shiny as you. When trouble strikes, Kenan Thompson transforms from the nerdy Mark Kent into the incredible Super Dude, the teenage superhero with unbelievable superpowers and a sensitive side. Hug this! Unfortunately, Super Dude has one glaring weakness. He's lactose intolerant, as someone will always conveniently explain to us. Can't! Super Dude is lactose intolerant! Even more unfortunate, he has a rogues gallery of some of the silliest dairy-themed villains, and a laughably unconvincing doppelganger. So long, Super Dude! <laughs> Thankfully, when things get milky, there's always someone around to aid this huggable hero, enabling him to bring the bad guys to justice and end the show with a groan-worthy pun. This obvious Superman parody gave us a laugh at just how hammy the superhero genre can be. Get some of this milky goodness, baby! <laughs> Number 7, Cooking with Randy and Mandy. <laughs> Kenan Thompson and Angelique Bates played Randy and Mandy, two perky teenage chefs obsessed with chocolate. Chocolate candy, chocolate bars, chocolate chips, chocolate chocolate. They loved the sweet dessert so much that they incorporated it into all of their dishes. And hilarity was never too far behind. When Angelique left the show in season three, Randy became a solo chef, usually working with a guest who just couldn't appreciate his chocolate-coated passion. Probably the biggest thing Keenan can take away from playing Randy is getting to work alongside the late Chris Farley for one episode, where Farley went all out and caused a huge mess, even when the directors told him not to. Told him not to destroy the cake, but he did it anyway because he knew it would be the best take. Number six, Walter the Ear Boy. Would you like to, um, go out with me? <laughs> In a parody of a classic sitcom, Josh Server dons extra-large prosthetic ears and becomes Walter the Ear Boy. Walter is constantly ridiculed because of his large ears, and his only friends aren't exactly normal either. 
especially Cal Mitchell as Pizza Face. Maybe if you can dance, people will forget about your freakish ears. They didn't laugh at me, and my face is borderline nasty. Luckily, he can always seek help from an unlikely source, Katrina Johnson as an insane caricature of Ross Perot, who can do anything he wants because he's a billionaire. Now I asked you, which one does not, I repeat, does not have an earring? There are two deep messages behind this sketch. Don't be ashamed of your imperfections, and absolutely anything can be made into a sitcom. It's Walter, boy, are really big. Number 5. The Inconvenience Store. And I'll give you your time. Kenan Thompson and Nick Cannon dressed in drag? That alone is a recipe for comedy. The two portray Lanisha and Latanya. Two sassy, lazy cashiers for the quick and fast convenience store. Hey, boy, you blocking my view now? Keeping up the tradition of horrible employees, these ladies are incredibly rude to everyone, especially customers. And instead of doing any actual work, they'd rather, quote, get their freak on every chance they get. After Keenan, Lanisha left the show in season six, Latanya became a receptionist at Dugco Enterprises, but was still as lazy and sassy as ever. These two playing such over-the-top, mouthy characters is enough to bust our guts, which makes Latanya's comeback in The Nick Cannon Show all the more welcome. I could be the star of this show, shoot, shoot. I could dance just like Tanya, shoot, shoot. I, I, I could sing, so, ooh, ooh, ooh. Number four, Everyday French with Pierre Escargot. Don't put bacon fat on my toilet seat, ha! <laughs> Leave it to all that to work in some semi-educational moments and still be hilarious. Donning only a raincoat and swim fins, Pierre Escargot, played by Kenan Thompson, sits in a bathtub and teaches viewers how to say the silliest phrases in French, or at least what sounds like French. May I take a nap in your nose? <laughs> this was Kenan's favorite sketch, and it's not hard to see why. All he had to do was sit in a bathtub, do any random, silly activity he could think of, and utter faux French, no real research necessary. Originally, this sketch was supposed to teach viewers Spanish with Paco Delicious, but this was way funnier and probably less offensive. I can see myself in your pantyhose. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, vital information. You'll seem peculiar if you go up to your principal and say, hey, how's your butt? Imagine Saturday Night Live's weekend update, but instead of jokes based on current events, you get silly, informative one-liners and the occasional visual gag. That's exactly what you can expect with All That's longest running sketch, vital information. If you go fishing and you don't use all the worms, Put cheese on them, give them to your little brother, and tell him it's wormaroni and cheese! <laughs> For the first four seasons, Lori Beth Denberg powered through the role with a charismatic charm. Following her departure, the torch was passed to Danny Tamborelli for seasons five and six, and he made the role all his own with his loud energy. Baby, you're gonna dance! After a three season hiatus, the sketch was brought back for the final season with Lil JJ at the desk. And while not as memorable as his two predecessors, he still acquitted himself admirably. When you smell smoke in your pants, you better ask yourself, why am I sniffing my pants? Number two, Ask Ashley. The cutest ones are always the deadliest, as Amanda Bynes reminds us in her most iconic All That skit, Ask Ashley. Tatiana writes, Dear Ashley, that's me! At first, Ashley seems like a sweet, precious girl answering letters sent in by her fans. But after she reads the letters, the beast comes out. She screams and berates the viewers in the angriest way imaginable. I said that's your stinking question! No! You can't really blame her for these tirades since almost all of the questions she's asked come from very stupid people. Even famous advice columnist Dr. Joyce Brothers couldn't handle them. Who writes these stinking letters? My house is all dark because I'm too stupid to turn on the lights and blah -de -da -de -da -de -da. Before we unveil our number one pick, stop, look, and watch these honorable mentions. This looks like it controls the height of your leg. It looks oh, like okay. it's time for you to go. I don't think it's not. Uh, oh, oh, help me! I'll help you, ma'am. I'll just look in this filing cabinet. Excuse me! I'm. Prepare man, 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 man. Number one, Good Burger. One Good Burger with 40 pieces of meat. Hey, hey, <laughs> hold the hard hat there, Smiley. Using his best surfer dude impression, Kel Mitchell becomes Good Burger's dim-witted cashier, Ed. While Ed's heart is in the right place, the same can't be said for his brain, and his customers get very impatient with his bumbling nature. Can I see your manager, please? Oh, sure. <laughs> 
His name is Mr. Bailey, isn't he cute? <laughs> this skit kept us laughing for five seasons, but it tragically didn't sit well with critics as a 1997 feature film. Despite this, it was still popular enough to make a comeback years later for season 9, with Ryan Coleman taking over the role of Ed. He did his best, but it's hard to compete with Kel, the OG who made the role his own, and taught us that we're all dudes. I'm a dude. He's a dude. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo and subscribe for new videos every day.